What's up everyone? My name's Alex and I'll be looking after you guys for the next 4 minutes and 28 seconds as I go over the breakdown and overview of Debris Field. If you haven't seen the original video, check out the video link on the top right hand corner of the screen. This video will go into a breakdown of the first two shots, volumetric clouds, and a bit about how we created our 3D environment. So let's get started. The first shot here uses a modified camera from the original video so you can get a better look at the 3D environment. The shot consisted of 22 cloud layers, 4 sets of debris, 1 environment map, 1 ship model, and 2 sets of thrusters. The cloud layers were all created using HitFilm's Particle Simulator. At the bottom of the screen are some really useful videos that go over important skills and techniques directly related to setting up our shot. If you're not comfortable with those techniques, I'd highly recommend checking those out first. They were created by HitFilm staff and fellow HitFilmers with you guys in mind. This next shot consists of three main components, the clouds, the debris, and the shuttle, which are broken up to show each component separately here. In the actual video, they all exist as 3D objects within the HitFilm workspace. The 3D assets consist of 14 cloud layers, 6 debris clusters, a shuttle model, and 2 interface layers. Another important component of this scene were the cameras. The shuttle camera controls how the shuttle model, interface, and reflection move through 3D space by parenting those layers to the camera. The audience camera was used to independently control what the viewer sees from within the ship without disrupting the overall movements of the shuttle. When creating the environment, the first thing we did was arrange the models in Blender 3D, making sure each model existed at different positions along the z-axis. Once everything was set within Blender, we grouped up the models into clusters and exported them using the OBJ format. If you're not familiar with preparing models in Blender for HitFilm, check out the awesome tutorial by fellow HitFilmer RR Picture Productions. The next step is to import everything into HitFilm. Once again, if you're unfamiliar with this process, check out either the HitFilm manual online or the 3D model import video produced by the HitFilm staff. During the import process, if you've organized your models within a 3D program like Blender, set the unit model scale to an appropriate size rather than using the auto normalize function. This way, your models retain their relative sizes to one another. Once the clusters are imported into HitFilm, it's time to arrange them within HitFilm 3D space, making sure they exist at different positions along the z-axis. For greater control over the interactions taking place in 3D space, import your debris individually rather than creating clusters. This will allow you to fine tune individual components, but will also increase the amount of time it takes to set up. When creating volumetric clouds, start by creating a volumetric light setup. If you're not familiar with doing one, check out the tutorial by Simon Jones. The next step is to place your models or clusters into your scene. Arrange them so at least some of them exist at different positions along the z-axis. Once those are set, sandwich each cluster between multiple layers of clouds. Make sure you also space out the cloud layers along the z-axis. The more layers you use, when given enough space between them will give you greater control over how volumetric the clouds feel. The reason for this is that if all layers exist at the same location, once the camera reaches that position, all the clouds will disappear from view. However, if you provide enough space for each layer, you can adjust their opacity as the camera approaches each cloud. This will better simulate the feeling of traveling through a cloud or fog. Once the positioning of the clouds is set, focus on randomizing how each cloud looks and behaves. This will cause each layer to light up slightly differently throughout the shot, adding to the illusion of depth. Once you're happy with all of that, you can start applying effects. We use diffuse, a bit of lens dirt, and the cloud effect, the latter of which seem to give the clouds a more wispy, natural feel. Well, that's it for this overview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to reply in the comment section below or find our VFX thread over on the HitFilm forums. See ya!